right, so sticking with our um, operations with rational numbers, we're going to get into adding and subtracting fractions. So you have these two pieces of paper that you're going to cut out just like you cut out the other two. Um, and also an activity that's going to go on the following page. Okay, but you don't have to worry about cutting this out yet. For now, just cut out these two. Um, and you can either tape them in after we take the notes, or you can put them in first and, um, and take the notes after. The only thing is, if you put them in first and you use glue, sometimes the glue gets wet. Um, so it gets hard to write over that. So you just got to be wary about that. But go ahead and pause the video and you can cut out and put those in your book or um, choose to do the notes after. All right, so let's take a look at adding and subtracting with fractions. Um, again, we're going to start with another I can statement. So this one's going to be pretty straightforward. I can add and subtract fractions. Here's the key though, um, with like and unlike, denominators. Okay, now before we get into actually adding and subtracting the fractions, we wanna talk about the two different types of numbers you'll be seeing. Um, we have two different types of fractions we work with. One is called a mixed number. So a mixed number consists of, and I'll do this in a different color, I'll do this in green. So it consists of an integer. and a proper fraction. So a proper fraction is just when the numerator is uh, smaller than the denominator, like two is smaller than three, so this is two thirds. So this would be in uh, a mixed number, four and two thirds, your four whole numbers, right, and two, of three parts okay so now conversely what is an improper fraction so an improper fraction occurs when the numerator is greater than the denominator okay and I'll do that one in purple so when the numerator is greater than the denominator. Okay. Now there are ways to add fractions that are that are both mixed numbers and fractions that are mixed numbers and improper and and kind of mixing the two together. But Really the best way to add fractions is if we get them either both into a mixed number, okay, with the same denominator, or both into an improper fraction with the same denominator. That's how we can add them together, okay? And it's usually easier to make them both improper. Um, so let's kind of work with that. Let's go with the first one here. Let's make this mixed number four and two thirds into an improper fraction. So the way you do that is the three here is the denominator. So if you think about a fraction as part over a whole, this is three, um, this is how you make a whole. It takes three parts, right? If this was three over three, we'd have another whole and that would change that to five. So we have four holes, okay? So full holes mean that we have four threes. So you're gonna take four and you multiply it by three, and then you add the two parts you have left over. So this becomes four times three plus two. 
which is then 4 times 3 is 12 plus 2 is 14 so 14 over 3 so you're multiplying the uh, integer by the denominator and then adding it to the numerator okay so that's really what you have to remember here now to go the other way you're trying to see how many um, right you have more parts than you do a whole if I broke this up into eighths right I'd have eight eighths would make one and then I'd have four left over so how many times this is what I usually ask my students how many times can eight go into twelve well it can go in one time so it goes in once and there's my integer and then you say well how much is left over because it went in once Right, so if I take 8 away from 12, I have 4 left. So that's 1 and 4 eighths. And what we want to do now is we want to simplify that, right? Because you can reduce 4 over 8. 4 over 8, um, they both have a common factor of 2. Right? 2 goes into both of those. So if I divide both of those by 2, I still have my one whole, and this becomes two fourths. And if you noticed before I did, that they actually have a common factor of two, but their greatest common factor was four. Um, so if I had started this with a four, it would be all the way simplified, because I could keep going with two fourths. All right, so if I divide both of those by 4, then we'd have 1 whole, and 4 divided by 4 is 1. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So you may have been able to notice right away that 1 and 4 eighths is the same as 1 and 1 half, because 4 is half of 8. But that's kind of how you, you see the two, um, the two numbers. So, as we keep going down, it's important to note that in order to add or subtract fractions, we need to have a common denominator. Okay, the adding and the subtracting, um, you know how to do that already. So I don't have to break this up into adding fractions and then subtracting fractions because the process is the same. Only one you're adding and the other you're subtracting. But making those denominators common, that's really the process that you have to learn and that process that you have to get used to. So let's bring it down to these two examples here. Um, the one on the left, these already have like denominators. They're already common denominator, right? They're both in eighths. So it's easy to add these together. For example, let's make a whole, and I'll show you with a model. And let's divide it into eighths. So let's count how many we have. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. And so we have five eighths. So that's five of them. Right? And we're adding one eighth. There's my, that represents one eighth. So how many eighths do we have all together? Well, we have five and one, which is six. So the total answer here is that they both have the denominator eight and five plus one is six. Now we can reduce, reduce six over eight. Um, what number goes into both six and eight, right? What's a common factor between them? One goes in, but that doesn't really help us. Um, two goes in, so let's see, does three go into both? No. Four doesn't go into both. 
five doesn't, six doesn't. At that point, I'm above six, so there's no point in, in trying any other numbers. So I know that two goes into both. So to reduce it, I'm going to divide both the top and the bottom by two. And that's going to give me my final answer. So six over eight is the same as three over four. And that's my answer. So that's with like denominators. Um, it's a little bit more tricky when you have unlike denominators. And that's the problem we're about to do next. All right, there's a trick for adding and subtracting with fractions that have unlike denominators. Um, one way and the more classical way to do it is to take the six and the four and you figure out what their least common multiple is, right? And you look at the six and pretend this is a four and you look at which one has least in common and that's going to be the fraction that you're going to use. That's gonna be your new denominator. And then you change both of those fractions to have that denominator. What I'm gonna do in this video is show you a trick. Um, and it's a trick that your book shows you um, with a more algebraic definition. I'm gonna show you how it's used in practice. Okay, so for this you're actually gonna need three different colors. So I'm gonna use, so the colors that I'm gonna use are blue, green, and red. Okay, so. What I want to do here um, for my trick is I'm going to take the 5 and I'm going to multiply it by 4. And you get 5 times 4. I'm going to write that off to the side here. Then, <clears throat> with a different color now, you're going to take the 6 and you're going to multiply it by 1. So you have 6 times 1. And you're going to put that off to the side here. Now, this is addition. So we're going to add these two numbers together. And when you do that, you get, well, 5 times 4 is 20. Six times one is six. So when you add both those together, you get 26. Okay. Now the denominator is why we multiplied across. Okay. Because the denominator is going to be six times four, which is 24. Okay. Some people call this the butterfly method. So my fraction now is 26 over 24. And let's see if we can reduce that. What number goes into both 26 and 24? They're pretty large, um, but I know they're both even numbers. That means two can go into them. So I'm going to divide both of the numbers by two. And when I do that, I get 13 over 12. And of course, that is an improper fraction, right? Because the definition, again, of an improper fraction is when the numerator is larger than the denominator. So I have 13 twelfths, which really means that I have 12 goes into 13 once, and I have one left over. So one and one twelfth. So we got one and one twelfth for that one, and then three fourths for this one. Okay, so that's how you um, add and subtract with uh, fractions. On the left side, you're going to use the same process uh, with this paper that says your turn. You're going to um, circle one through five, five being the highest on how comfortable you are with adding and subtracting fractions. Um, and you're going to attempt these problems and show your teacher when you're done um, to see if you understand the material enough to go to the practice problems. So continuing with operations with rational numbers, I want you to try out this activity. This is on identifying um, equal fractions. 
So in this gumball here, you have fractions that are equal to 3 fourths. And in this gumball machine here, you have fractions that are equal to 1 fourth. And you have all these little gumballs here on this page that you're going to either cut out or if you wanted to, you could just kind of make a circle here and color them in so you don't have to go through that whole process. But you're going to put the gumballs into the machines and then answer these questions. This is going to go on the left side, so you're going to cut this out. And this is going to go on the left side. Um, and this, obviously, you're not going to put that over here. We're going to use this page for notes for the next video. Um, this is going to be just kind of like more practice on um, equal fractions. So you're going to take these little gumballs, like 27 36 and you're going to place them into which one they belong into um, by either gluing them or just drawing a circle and writing in the fraction. That's up to you.